Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Rats. What do they want from us? Rats. Why are they man's enemy? Rats. They are watching and waiting. Why do rats repel us? What is it about those little furry bodies that's so frightening? Just think of them close to you. They're here. They're coming. God, no! Who could stop them and how? Rats are here, under our feet, all around us. Come on, out in the open so I can smash you to pieces! Come to the slaughter! A strange rat from another community came into it. He was soon killed. And afterwards, eaten. Seething, teeming millions. Their little red eyes gleaming with rage and hunger. And they are waiting for you. No! I'm warning you. Drop the guns, Kurt. Go on. You'll never get away. You two move that console and barricade yourselves in. No. I'll try to stop them. Rats, they're waiting for you. Night. Because this is your night of terror. Here come the rats. And welcome back. You've just heard the trailer for disc number 46 of the 88 Films Italian Collection series. This is Rats, Nights of Terror. As listed on the 88 Films website, it says thus, It took some time for Fright fans to really groove to the eclectic, insane and often inane brilliance of the late Bruno Mattai. Now, belated, viewed as a master of cut-price plasma spillage, the time is ripe to revisit one of the great man's wildish, uh, wildest accomplishments, Rats, Nights of Terror. Unveiled to audiences of video violence in 1984, this post-apocalyptic pot boiler sees some of the last humans alive grapple with a horde of flesh-eating rodents and the shocking final revelation that has fast become Matai's signature twist. Also featuring a superlative, 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 and some podcast that includes such Italian gore legends as Octavano, th this bit is just to fuck with Duncan, Octavano de la Quala, uh, who was in Zombie Flesh Eaters, uh, Greta Greta of Demons, and Massimo Vanni, of Zombie 3. Rats, Knights of Terror is a creepy creature feature that positively oozes with intrigue. I don't know what's happening with my, my mouth today. And this beautiful new Blu-ray release. 
The special features on this are a remastered HD transfer, high definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation, an uncompressed original English audio, an uncompressed alternative Italian audio, newly translated English subtitles for the Italian audio, new interview with stuntman and, and leads Massimo, Massimo Viani and up Tavano della Quala. Aquila? I don't even think there's an L in it and I'm printing it anyway, that's that did. Octavano. Um, new interview with composer uh, Luigi Sarcelli, theatrical trailer, and a reversible sleeve with the Italian title. The technical specs are that it's region locked to region B, it has audio of LPCM stereo, the picture is 1080p HD 1851, the runtime is just over an hour and a half, the language is English and Italian on the disc with English subtitles. So this is one that I am very familiar with having never seen. Mostly because I know what the twist ending is, and I've known what the twist ending to this movie has been for quite some time. I can't remember exactly how it was spoiled to me, or if it was one of those ones where I was reading a book um, about horror movies and that sprung its way in there, but this was one that was known to me, and trust me, I will not spoil this for you, because I know there's a lot of people listen to these reviews that have never checked out the movies, uh, so I won't spoil it for you. I will say the ending, their class in this is like the most insane reveal ever. It really isn't. And if you've seen other movies of the creature feature variety and without giving too much away, if you've seen something like Planet of the Apes, um, this, this kind of falls within that territory. The movie itself, I was actually surprised. I was... I'm not the biggest Bruno Matai fan, and I know that might shock some people out there. I think what he does is fine and fun, and as long as he sticks to fine and fun, I think he's in his safe lane. Um, none of his movies are excellent, and I think that's maybe, I think that's maybe the bit that, that kind of always sticks with me. He gets a lot of time and a lot of traction for people talking about his stuff, but I think all of his movies are kind of middle of the road. Um, I do like Zombie Creeping Flesh, and I know what you're saying, Duncan, Zombie Creeping Flesh is amazing. I can't believe you just said that. I don't think it's an exceptional movie when you compare it to other movies of the time from the, the area of the world that they were being created. So I, I find these movies bonkers. It tends to throw a lot against the wall to see if any will stick. And some of it does, some of it doesn't. Um, and that's kind of where I land with the Rats, Nights of Terror. Um... I mean, it's fun, it's bonkers, it's cliche, and it's hitting a shitload of different tropes that we've seen done in American movies up to this point. I mean, I, I love the fact that we're leaning right into the idea of these... Uh, this kind of post-apocalyptic world where essentially people are scavengers, but they're like 80s punk scavengers, which... Right, okay, I know plenty of movies from this era where if you were doing a genre movie, everyone had to dress like kind of crust punks. Um, and that's what they look like here. They're like somewhere between, imagine the survivors in Day of the Dead were all punks. And that's kind of the cast of this movie. They really don't care about anything or really don't care about anyone and happen to stumble across this area where there appears to be food and clean water and, you know, um, access to newly growing plants and whatnot. And this kind of inspires them to uh, to kind of cut loose. And to be honest, there's weird power struggles within this group here. Um, there's, uh, you know, kind of sex used as a weapon in here as well. And in the background, these rats that have grown to kind of have a taste for human flesh. And... That's your background for this movie. And I mean, it's fun for what it is. There's clearly people throwing a lot of either fake or real rats on people, kind of filchy style. You know, like, <laughs> characters are turning around and getting a, a, like a fuck ton of rodents flung at them. Which, I mean, is fun to watch on screen. I mean, it's a bit ludicrous. You know, oh, the rats bit me. Oh, I can't take it off me. You know, like we get we get a lot of those bits where you really are sitting there kind of scratching your head and trying to work out exactly what this is being aimed to do. You know, who this is exactly aimed for and what sort of terror this is actually supposed to generate. 
And whilst this is all going on and doing its thing, um, I found myself kind of losing interest by about the about the two thirds mark. My attention was starting to wane, and it wasn't because things weren't action enough. There's plenty of action scenes. The movie knows that like every five to ten minutes something big needs to happen so we need to have some sort of body reveal or someone being attacked or whatnot and that was fine it's just like I say I just felt that it was going a bit flat until maybe the last ten minutes and then the movie really really does pick up and the ending whilst not being the most original thing in the world I did find absolutely fucking preposterous like to the point that I like genuinely thought I was going to piss myself laughing um, and that laughter continued through a good two hours after the movie had finished I was still thinking back on it and giggling about how ludicrous the whole situation was and how it made not a lick of fucking sense like absolutely zero sense at all and then the movie finished and I was kind of sitting there going well what do you make of this movie I mean I think it's one of those ones that is worth ticking off the list I don't think this is near top tier Matai, if I'm honest. And as much as this is going to break some of the listeners' hearts that have been following this journey with me, this is not one I can see myself rushing back to anytime soon out with, let's talk about movies with goofy fucking endings. Uh, And then certainly it comes back into the conversation for sure. The Blu-ray print is immaculate, it looks really good, the sim quality is excellent on it and I dug the special features for sure, dug through them when the movie finished and I had, I had a blast going through them as well. The copy that I bought came with a nifty slipcase uh, and the poster, which is kind of cool, although weird shape, um, kind of lobby, like thin lobby poster shape, uh, which was interesting, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do with that, but it was cool to see that. Um, the soundtrack's bitching, really really enjoyed the soundtrack and like the set design and the cinematography were kind of cool as well so we had that, it's a cheap fucking movie and you can see it's a cheap fucking movie and that's kind of Matai's specialty and he, he does quite a lot with very little I think overall my, my thoughts on Rats Night of Terror is that There is a a weird place in the early 80s for Italian genre cinema where they start to infuse, you know, Giallo's kind of gone and the zombie stuff is, even by 84, kind of running its course now and it's kind of losing its steam. We've kind of moved away, although we'll try and bring back in about a year's time, Cannibals, so that's kind of done. So we're going to do these kind of sci-fi horror movies um, off the back of Alien, which was huge and and everywhere, it was just fucking huge. And um, we've got a lot of those creatures run amok movies at the late seventies from the states as well. So we're gonna try and meld them together and make it post apocalyptic and do all that shit. And a couple of the movies we've already covered from this time period already on the Eighty Eight Films Italian Collection. I've kind of grouped them in, like The Fall of New York, for example, is set about you know it's post apocalyptic future. And, and it has a lot of winks and nods and tropes to things that are used here. Interestingly enough, it was in the hands of a really, really good, competent director. Um, here we're in the hands of a guy who just likes, I think, just on a whim, just changes his mind on how he's going to do things. And you just have to roll with it and get on the roller coaster and stay until the end or else. And I think sometimes that works really well and sometimes it doesn't. And I think in the case of this one, it works okay but it doesn't work great and it's goofy and it was fun I'll be honest I did have fun watching it but my kind of overriding thought when it came to a close was when is the next time I'll watch this movie and to be honest with you I don't think it's going to be for a long long time I can still say I liked it I just didn't like it as much as I thought I was going to like it and for that Rats Night of Terror gets a 3 out of 5 from me. I'll be honest, through another viewing of this movie, it might drop down to a 2.5, which is low when you consider the old uh, Italian collection has scored relatively high um, through the 45 preceding discs. It's not a bad movie, I know I'm sounding kind of down, but it's been 
the the run of the 40s movies has been for the most part kind of fucking incredible uh, and this feels like a bit of a misstep you know just something that could have been a whole hell of a lot better in the hands of maybe another director I mean these guys placed his time and Matai is always he's, he's always shown me things I've never seen before but sometimes those things are cheap <laughs> so it's worth, worth counting on them a 3 out of 5 for this movie for sure